Dr. Tweedy, written by Robert Riley Crutcher with Harry Von Zell and starring Frank Morgan. Thaddeus Q. Tweedy, Doctor of Philosophy and Dean of Men at Potts College, is a devotee of the bassoon. It is a musical instrument which is extremely difficult to play. Dr. Tweedy's old English sheepdog, Baldy, wishes it were impossible. Baldy, stop beating your head against the wall. My bassoon playing isn't that bad. And stop sneering. You look almost human. Now, you sit here beside my chair, and I'll play you some beautiful music. Now, listen. Baldy! Well, Baldy, you're singing! Try shortening bread. <laughs> Who's Nelson Eddy? I can see it now. The Metropolitan Opera Company presents Caruso Baldy. With all that hair, you'll be perfect for the Barber of Seville. <laughs> Why, Miss Kitty Bell and Colonel Jackson, won't you come in? Thank you, Dr. Tweedy. My brother Beauregard and yeah. I are so excited about your marvelous idea of performing a little old musical group. Yeah. Well, we were talking about it while Beauregard was having his mint julep. Yes. He's had only one. He's turning over a new leaf. Yeah, I know. A mint leaf. <laughs> Dr. Tweedy Sam, I purchased a new set of mint julep glasses. Yeah? They're two feet tall. <laughs> my, my, my. One of those, and you don't have to hunt for a lamppost. You just lean against the glass. <laughs> a delightful drink, sir. Yeah. While making it, you drop in a mint leaf every six inches. Oh. And when the two-foot glass is full of that delectable fluid, you dust just a suggestion of powdered sugar over the top. Oh, dear. And then when you drink it down, you know you're really living. Yeah. And everyone else thinks you're dead. <laughs> well, that's the nicest way I can think of to go. And if I go, I can take it with me. <laughs> It's going to be so much fun having these little musical evenings. I just love classical music. My yes, favorite I... composers are Rachmaninoff, Prokofiev, Tchaikovsky, Rimsky, Korsakov, Shostakovich, Stravinsky, Mussorgsky, and Hoagy Carmichael. <laughs> uh, uh, what are you going to call your little old musical group? Uh, the Tweedy Chamber Music Society. Now, let's bring in Miss Kitty Bell's harp from the porch. Mrs. Apopolis will be here any minute with our flute. Hmm. Oh, my, it's dark out here. Yes, my porch light is burnt out. Yes, look out, Colonel. The harp! Your nose! You're, you're, you're... Well, the harp's out of tune, but my nose is a perfect C sharp. <laughs> now, Dr. Tweedy, if you'll sound your A, Beauregard will tune up his silver cornet. <laughs> Mint julep. I shouldn't have drunk the last four inches. Yes. Yeah. Well, uh, Colonel, the wind from your cornet is tarnishing my bassoon. Would you mind blowing the other way? <laughs> now let's tune up. One, two, three. How's everything, kiddo? Here's a populace with her hot flirt. Let's jam up the joint. <laughs> Jam the joint. Uh, well, certainly, twiddle my twiddle. I love to twiddle my flutel. <laughs> yes. Well, notice how much my bassoon playing has improved in the last few weeks. <laughs> Well, I haven't 
started playing yet. My finger got caught in the valve. <laughs> <laughs> now, Mrs. Poplar, sound your A. I'm all puckered up and ready to let fly. Yeah. Stand back, Swiddle, or you'll get a shower bath. <laughs> Oh, dear, Mrs. Apopolis, I'm afraid you're flat. Now, wait a minute, Scott, not so fast. <laughs> Apopolis has got perfect pitch. Yes, of course you have. <laughs> and uh, you have a delightful tremolo. <laughs> well, a little touchy. Keep talking, I love it. <laughs> Uh, Mr. Poplar, did you notice that you have several full notes here? Notes for you, too. <laughs> Let's play. Yeah, well. Rehearsal, the Tweedy Chamber Music Society has come to an end. Thank heaven. Uh, oh, Welby, I didn't see you standing there. Where's Baldy? Out in the backyard. He dug a hole and buried his head in it. How is he breathing? Doc, if I knew that, I'd have buried my head, too. Oh, dear. Poor Baldy. I'll have to get him some earmuffs like you're wearing. Oh, Doc, I, I come in to tell you Mr. Potts is at the back door. Oh, well, thank you, Welby. I'll go see what he wants. Good evening, Mr. Potts. Tweedy, yes? I came to see you because I have a big problem on my hands. How is Mrs. Potts? <laughs> Who cares? Well, I don't know. I just... No. <laughs> this is a new problem. Yes. Tweedy, it's my duty as chairman of the board of trustees to see to it that we have a good basketball team. Yes. Three weeks ago, we suffered a very humiliating defeat at the hands of Bullfinch. Oh, but our boys put up a great fight. Once they even got the ball... I thought it was a moral victory. We held them down to 85 points. So our... Nothing. <clears throat> this morning, the Army discharged one of the finest basketball players in the country. This afternoon, he enrolled here. Tomorrow night, Bullfinch will get a big surprise. They will? Yes. Uh, dribble! Oh, Dribble! Come over here! I, uh... Oh, no! That's the biggest surprise I've ever seen! <laughs> What is it? Uh, I mean, who is it? Tweedy, this yeah. is Dribble Jones. Dribble he Jones. stands seven feet two inches in his stocking feet. And when he plays, he wears built-up tennis shoes. Oh. Dribble, this is Dr. Tweedy. Where? Here I am, down here. Oh, <laughs> down there. Hi, Dr. Seedy. I've... It's Tweedy. <laughs> Thaddeus Q, Ph.D., Dean of Men. Tweedy, yes. I want Dribble to stay here with you until the game tomorrow night. Yes. Take good care of him and see to it that nothing happens to Dribble. No. We can't win without him. Don't you worry, Mr. Potts. I'll take care of everything. He can double up with Sidney in his role. Uh, he'll have to double up. Uh, <laughs> nothing is going to happen to Dribble. Well, if anything does happen to him, you'll have me to face. Oh, what a horrible thought. <laughs> yes, well, keep it in mind, Tweedy. Yes. Good night. Good, Good night, Dribble. Good night. Don't worry about the game, Mr. Potts. It's yeah. in the bag. Yeah. There'll be good news tomorrow night. Yeah. Well. Good night. <laughs> Where's your luggage, Dribble? Well, I've got this basketball. I'm a dribbling fool. Uh, yeah. Say, that looks like fun. Let me try bouncing it. Sure. Here's the ball, Dr. Petey. Yeah. Uh, well, the name is Tweedy. Is this the way you do it? Yeah. <laughs> Hey, that's pretty tricky dribbling. Uh, I never saw anybody bounce it with his face before. Well, I didn't mean to. Now we'll pretend the front of the garage there is the basket. Now just watch me sink this shot, dribble. The garage moved. Where'd the ball go? It's over there. In the second story window box next door. Oh, I could ring the doorbell and tell Mrs. Poplis there's the basketball in a flower box. Oh, no. I guess it's late. Uh, boost me up, Dribble. 
Ouch! Dr. Giddy, you're standing on my ears. Oh, I'm sorry. I'll step down to your shoulders. Uh, here's the basketball nestled in the dead petunias. The riddle, my sweet little second story man. <laughs> No, I don't. Uh, we've not... Uh, good evening, Mrs. Apopolis. Uh, I thought you were in bed. How romantic. <laughs> Chasing at each other through the dead petunias. Well, it's a bit embarrassing. You see, I was looking for a basketball, believe it or not. <laughs> oh, don't make excuses, sweet little tootsie -wootsie. I love it. Just like Romeo and Juliet. You're kidding yourself on my balcony. What are you standing on? A tall friend of short acquaintance. <laughs> I'm coming, Mrs. Apopolis. Oh, Tweedle, I heard some noises and called Colonel Jackson. I didn't know it was you out there. Oh, how sad. You're looking at an unhappy Greek. You're looking. You're looking. Oh, he's coming with dueling pistols to save me. Go oh. along, uh, so Dr. Weedy. Don't dribble. Don't run away. Don't leave me hanging here. Oh, I'm hanging here. Don't worry, Mr. Pompolis. I'll kill all four of those men hanging from your window. <laughs> four men? Oh, no. He's had another two-footman jeweler. Balls of fire! <laughs> Frank Morgan as the fabulous Dr. Tweedy. Last night, things were pretty much up in the air, including Dr. Tweedy. Today, Dr. Tweedy's manservant, Welby Skinkle, is telling his very dear friend, the houseboy at the Phi Beta Quota fraternity house, all about it. Boy, Timothy, I want to tell you about last night. As soon as I finished the iron and I rushed right over here to the maternity house. <laughs> Sit down, Welby, and tell me all the juicy details. Yeah, okay, but I can only stay a minute. There was more... Hey, what are you doing with them long needles? Oh, I'm knitting myself a sweater. <laughs> so I'll be warm and cozy when we go out to play in the snow. <laughs> Yeah, well, you got the perfect shape for a sweater, too. <laughs> well, let me tell you about last night. I hear someone yelling. I rushes out, and there was the doc hanging from Mrs. Apopolis's window box on the second floor. Oh, heavens to Betsy. Go on. Well, <laughs> Colonel, Colonel Jackson is shooting off his dueling pistols, and the doc was scared stiff. Oh, mercy. I'd be scared, too. 
Well, he wasn't scared of the colonel. That Mrs. Apopolis was trying to drag him in the window. Oh, he did. Oh, nuts. I got so excited, I dropped a stitch. I didn't hear nothing. No, I dropped it. But that's enough of this gossip. We've got work to do. Work? Mr. Potts wants you and me to guard the athletic trophies in the administration building. He's afraid the bullfinches will swipe them before the big game tonight. Oh, yeah, I remember. Like they done three weeks ago. Ah. Well, let's get going. I got my wheelbarrow parked in front of a fire plug. I don't want to get no ticket. (laughs) Well, V, we can stop for some refreshments on the way. Yeah. (laughs) It's cold out. I could use a slug of antifreeze. You know something? What? I found an old Pierce arrow. No! Yes! (laughs) Nobody has drained the antifreeze out of that radiator since 1926. Oh, boy! (laughs) Vintage stuff! Yes! Hey, where's the pliers and Dixie cup? And here you are, Welby. And, And just in case those... Bullfinches try to steal any trophies tonight. Here's our baseball bat. Oh, boy, give me that bat. Let me show you what I do to one of them guys. Here, turn your head a little bit. Hmm? Don't move. That, that's right. That's it. <laughs> well, what are you waiting for? Go ahead and hit me on the head. <laughs> I just... Oh, nuts. Timothy, I just bopped you. Oh. Now it's my turn to pretend I'm defending the trophies. Yeah. And the first one that yells out is a sissy. Stick out your head. <laughs> well, look at me bounce. <laughs> it must be them rubber heels I'm wearing. <laughs> yeah, well, now it's my turn, Timothy. Here. Hold your head still. Now. Do you hear that little bird singing, Welby? I'm a nature lover. I'm crazy about birds. Wait. I'm getting a little headache. Must have been something I ate. But I don't hear no bird. Turn your head a little bit more and you will. Yeah. Timothy, now that's beautiful. <laughs> Can you see the boy? No, I see nothing but stars. Let's practice defending the trophy some more. Yeah, okay, I love them boys. Yeah. <laughs> 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 front door waiting for me to come home. What have you been doing? Oh, yes. Well, it's late, and Sydney isn't home yet. I'd better turn on the lights in the living room. Dr. Dr. Tweedy! Look, Mary and Sydney. I'm sorry. (laughs) Sydney, your nose is bleeding. Oh, no, it's lipstick. Uh, What are you two doing sitting in the dark? Oh, well, you see, Dr. Tweedy, I got this wristwatch for Christmas. It has a radium dial you can see in the dark, and Sydney and I wanted to see what time it was. Oh, well, what time is it? Gee whiz, Dr. Tweedy. Uh, We were talking. Well, I didn't hear anything. I must have come in during a lull in the conversation. (laughs) What we were talking about was, a couple of weeks ago, the kids from Bolt and Shoe saw our athletic trophies, and we're afraid they'll try it again tonight. I remember how mad that made Mr. Potts the last time. Why don't you two go get them and bring them here for safekeeping? Gee, Dr. Tweedy, aren't Mary's lips beautiful? Uh, yeah. Uh, would you mind turning off the lights on your way out, Dr. Tweedy? Oh, yes. Would you mind turning off the lights on your way out, Dr. Tweedy? We only have an hour before the basketball game starts. Yes, I understand. You have so much to talk over. I'll get Dribble to bring the trophies over here. Dribble, is that you out there in the garage? Yes, Dr. Tweedy. Hmm. Well, what I'm do you playing do? with a little gopher. You know, the, the school mascot. <laughs> Oh, 
nice little filbert, the gopher. How are you tonight? <laughs> yeah, you like being out of your cage, don't you, filbert? Oh, what? <laughs> Is he a cute little rascal? Come here, filbert. <laughs> Ow! <laughs> he bit you. I know it. He always bites you. Oh, look. Now, he's sorry. He's licking the wound. <laughs> Ow! He bit me again. Let me hold him. Yeah, but keep him away from your basketball. He might chew it. He might bite the... Oh. <laughs> he bit it. Oh, dear. Where's Philbin? Oh, there you are. Blew you right back in your cage. That'll teach you to keep your big buck teeth out of basketball. That's all I've asked the game. Athletic trophies. Dribble! I want you to go over to the administration building, get the athletic trophies, and bring them here. I want to be sure nobody steals them. But what if somebody thinks I'm stealing them? I'm new around here. Oh, yeah, well, there won't be anyone guarding those athletic trophies. That's why I want to lock them up in my garage. Just be very careful and don't get into any trouble. We need you to win that basketball game. Those trophies are as good as in the garage right now, Dr. Needy. Good. And I'm not needy, I'm seedy. I mean, I'm seedy. <laughs> I'll meet you at the game. Silver the gopher in his new uniform. Yellow jersey and purple trunks with a hole for the tail. And little tiny tennis shoes. <laughs> Take him away. <laughs> Have you seen Dr. Tweedy? Uh, sure, Mr. Potts. There he is, coming in on the other side of the gym. Oh. Dr. Tweedy! Dr. Tweedy! Yes, did you hear that, Mr. Potts? They cheered me when I came in. Are you sure it wasn't the bullfinch cheering section, Tweedy? What a thrill, Mr. Potts. Tonight, we win our first basketball game at last. Potts! Triumphant! Ah, uh, yes. This is a great day for Pot yes. and a personal triumph for me. That's right. I was shrewd enough to enroll Dribble Jones. Mm -hmm. And tonight, those bullfinch kids won't steal our athletic trophies again. No, I've seen to that. No, I've seen to that. Yes. I ordered Welby and Timothy to stand guard over them. And you know what they'd do to anyone who tried to take them? Yes. <laughs> They've each got a baseball bat. <laughs> they have? Oh. They've each got a baseball bat. And I sent Dribble Jones over there. Oh, no! <laughs> Queenie! You didn't! Yes, you'd be surprised I did. My brand new tall center. Yes, sir. After they get through with him with those baseball bats, he'll be a foot shorter. Yes. Excuse me, Dr. Tweedy. Uh, will you hold Filbert? I have to help Mary lead the next year. Yes. Oh, dear. What'll I do with him? Uh, here, here. Filbert, get into this big wooden box. Tweedy, this is too much. I can't stand anymore. Well, sit down, Mr. Potts. We want Pebble! We want trouble. 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 Yeah. We want trouble. Yeah. We want Here comes Dribble now, hot, and he's hot, as tall hot. as he was before. Hi, Dr. Seedy. Those yeah. trophies are safe in your garage, and I'm sorry I'm a little late, because I stopped to watch a couple of guys standing beside the trophies beating each other over the heads with baseball bats and talking about birds. Oh, dear. Welby and Timothy play so rough. They didn't yeah. even see me taking the trophies. Never mind, Tweedy. Give dribble a ball and let's start the game. Certainly, Mr. Potts. Nothing can happen now to stop this game. Where are the basketballs? They're all in that box right there. In there? In yeah. that box? Well, we'll take one out. And in that big wooden box? Yes. But I put Phil with the gopher in there. He bites basketballs. Oh, no. Oh, no. I've done it again. Thanks, Mr. Wheaton. So she would see. This is a poplar's you brought it. Yes, your basketball. You left it in my flower box last night. Oh, Mrs. a poplar's I could kiss you. Well, let's. Have it, sweetie, my sweetie. Buck it up. Oh, no. Thank <laughs> Morgan. We'll be back in just a minute. The first here is...
Morgan appears by arrangement with Metro Goldwyn Mayer, producers of the Technicolor musical Till the Clouds Roll By. Here again is Frank Morgan with his thought for the week. My topic for today is horses. Fast horses, that is. But no horse can go as fast as the money you bet on them. Which brings me to my thought for the week. Bulls and bears aren't responsible for nearly as many stock losses as bum steers. Oh, dear. Good night. <laughs> Frank Morgan Show came to you from Hollywood. This is the United States Armed Forces Radio Service, the voice of information and education. Thank you.